Anyway, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get right to it. Thanks for your patience. Father in heaven, we uh, are excited because of your word. We're excited because of the joy we have in Christ. We are delighted by the way that you reach out to us and you give to us so many good things. We're excited to explore these things, be reminded of these things, and then help others to come to you as well and receive your wonderful word of salvation. Thank you again for each one viewing this and bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. John chapter four. And I'll have quite a long selection here. And it will be beneficial for us to see everything right in context. So John chapter four, and I forget how far we're going. 42. 42. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's where we're going. Okay. Uh, the Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. And Diane, you want to take off verse two? Verse two? Yeah. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in, a, in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Je Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship in the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Then leaving the water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. 
Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying? It's still four months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. And since you to reap what you have not worked for, others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. All right. Good reading. Excellent. It's almost like we have a picture of being right there in the dusty, dirty, midday hot sun. And there by the well that goes back thousands of years uh, to time of Jacob and others that to, in that area. Be north of Jerusalem, south of the Sea of Galilee and along that area. So uh, in this passage, we see there are there are kind of this it's been explained to me there are kind of these two levels there's a an earthly physical level to talk about different things going on there's water there's food there's this very tangible kind of thing the the well and all like that and then there's this spiritual level of talking of a meaning and depth of things on a spiritual plane and jesus is taking going back and forth and trying to get the woman to go from just thinking about the physical into the spiritual realm as well. And does he succeed? Absolutely. But she's really mystified most of the time in the passage that we read. But she does get it. And about the disciples. And they're mystified too. And they're thinking along this level. And do they get it? Well, probably not at this time, but later on, they'll get the whole meaning of what it means. Uh, that's the way John writes. Of course, John was undoubtedly right there, too, and has all this eyewitness account. But let's pick up question number one. Oh, I forgot to send it to you, Diane. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> question number one is, what were the barriers that Jesus crossed all kinds of barriers in this passage in order to actually have a conversation with this woman to converse with her uh, and to help her and to take her from one level to another. So just look at the passage and think about these barriers. And some of them are social conventions. Some of those are time bound, but the other things are not that way at all and really apply even into our own time. What, what what are some things that you found as you're going down through or thinking about? Well, he asked her for something and she was a complete stranger. I mean, aside from the fact that one was a Jew and one was a Samaritan, she was just a complete stranger. And he asked. Yes. Okay. So you already identified at least two things there. Complete stranger. <laughs> and then... Jew and Samaritan. We'll have to develop that second one a little bit. But yeah, um, the woman doesn't talk to him. He talks to her. So he breaks through that stranger kind of situation and just, uh, is it hard? Well, for him, no, not necessarily, but for us. What, what does he do? How does he break through that stranger danger? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it was at noon, 
So it was during the time when women wouldn't be at the well. So he um, kind of broke black social and then spoke to the woman. Okay, Karen has identified another big barrier here uh, that is, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a Venn diagram a loop around in a different direction, but it's still that same thing. Yes, he broke through and uh, he, yeah, he would not normally have talked to this woman. Uh, okay, so a social convention in the area and at the time was when to draw water? When, when, when did they go out? When it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> in the morning and uh here she is all by herself in midday maybe some of you have done the background there are a lot of scholars that make a lot out of this because she's there at midday instead of the regular time well either she's run completely out of water at her house and it's an emergency run but the the scholars talk a lot about her avoiding other people. Aha. Uh -huh. And why would that be? She was shunned. She, that is what they are uh, investigating and seeing, that she was probably not part of the, what do we say, the ladies' circle going out to get water at the right time because it was, and why not? She had a lifestyle history yes yes and possibly a history with some of their husbands <laughs> i mean or relatives you've had five husbands and the one you have now is not your yeah for sure with their neighbors yeah so there was definitely some um sinful practice there Okay, so we'll, we'll, that's another barrier that's in all this. Generally, men are not going to talk to women anyway, though. Okay, so there's another yes, uh, a gender barrier, right? Yeah. Right. How does Jesus overcome all these things? What, what are his words to her? Which, yeah, you got a verse for us, Karen, on that? Yeah. Uh, verse 7. Verse 7. Will you give me a drink? So he puts himself at her disposal. You see what I'm saying? He might have been, you know, he's, he's a rabbi, he's coming from a position of authority in the culture as a male, as a esteemed person, but he submits really himself. He humbles himself to ask her for a drink. And she could have said no. And that would have been the end of it. But no. Okay, so he makes himself kind of at her disposal that way and it's a simple question too he's hot he's thirsty you know jesus really was thirsty we don't want to minimize his humanity here and and, and say well he's the son of god he, 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 he's fine all the time no i mean he's thirsty he's hungry otherwise the passage has no meaning at all well it has some meaning but the disciples aren't there because they've gone to get food too Jesus was real and experienced all those things too. And there he is sitting down and, uh, and he, he puts himself at that disposal. Uh, sometimes we can do that too. Just to interject and think about your encounter perhaps in a restaurant. I mean, this is what we do. Can I have a drink, please? Mm -hmm. And it's a starter conversation with the server. Now the server is there for money and tips. And so they have... Oh other interest in mine too but that it conversations with strangers don't have to be that difficult to start and in the old testament i'm kind of deviating a little bit but when um uh, i think it was when they were looking for rachel that sent the servant and he talked to rachel so it wasn't uncommon, you know, 
And I think they did the same thing for for Isaac, I think. I'm not sure. Uh when Jacob is right. is there, yeah. Uh, and for Isaac, the servant of Abraham was looking for Isaac's future wife. And yes, very interesting parallel. Uh, that happened at a well also. Yes, the well encounter. And we should see that as a, as a continuous pattern there. Not just historical, but the way that God used the events to include more people in his kingdom. Yeah. Still. Still today. Okay. What else? Are there other barriers that we've talked about that you want to amplify a little bit? What about the Samaritan thing? Tell me about that. For half breeds, I don't remember who they connected with that the Jews did what they were not supposed to in marrying outside of their own community. And so these are people who are not fully Jews, but they have Jewish blood in them. And um, there's just a lot of hate between the Jews and the Samaritans, which um, appropriate or not, caused this very strong separation between them. That's right. That's right. And those well, goes back uh, hundreds of years at this point, even to the Northern Kingdom splitting off and the Southern Kingdom and the exile, where all those people were deported, you can see it on the wall there, that there's a line that cuts off. That's where the northern kingdom went into exile. And what did the Assyrians do? They brought people from other, we would say, ethnic groups or races, other nations, brought them in there, and they were not of the full Hebrew-Jewish line. Yeah, but they yet they adopted some of the customs and the, the and did worship the Lord in some way. But you see that there were major major differences because the woman brings up the differences. Okay, so let's take a look a little bit more at, at some of the barriers in the conversation that Jesus has to overcome. So we've talked about uh, that the fact that he is actually initiating the conversation. Then what other barriers that she puts up and says there in verse 9? You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? And then John says, for Jews do not even associate with Samaritans. Okay, there, there's the animosity. There's the barrier. Okay. I have a note that says, or do not use dishes Samaritans have used. Aha. Uh -huh. So germs, but except it's like cultural germs. Clean, unclean people, uh -huh. all of that. Absolutely. And here we're breaking through the barrier. Jesus is not going to be infected by his connection <laughs> with people that are supposedly unclean or sinners. He's not going to be, uh, it's going to go the other way. All right. Is there any? Well, we'll talk about that later. I mean, this things, implications for us today. Okay, uh, let's uh, continue. Excellent. I'm glad you brought that out, Rochelle. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Okay, now that's a kind of a difference here. So he's he's just teasing her a lot. Not teasing her, he's testing her interest in all of this. And it's like, oh, living water. What's this all about? And the woman's still really stuck on the physical, of course. What's she call him? Sir. Sir. Yeah, the basic, basic stuff here. Sir, you have nothing to draw with. The water's well as deep. How, where can you get this living water? There's a barrier here. I don't get it. You, you have a, you don't even have anything to draw with. And then the barrier, verse 12. What is that barrier? She's called him sir. And then verse 12, are you? Greater than our father Jacob. All right. Who, drew, who, who dug the well. 
Okay, so what's the answer? Yes. Of course. <laughs> but in her mind, no. So there's a barrier there. She's she's But she she's asking him a question that the answer is yes, and she really thinks the answer is no. She thinks you can't be greater than Jacob. That's right. And so he's gonna answer yes, and she's gonna like, well, this is wild. Yep. Preconceived ideas are really important here to overcome. I'm trying to inflate that a little bit. There we go. <laughs> yeah. She has these ideas uh, that uh, have to be broken through. This is a barrier. She has a preconceived idea based on oh. a lot of good reasons. He's dead. How can you be better how than him? How can you be better? All right, so how does Jesus break through? He, uh, uh, answers her and said, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. So he's kind of hitting at the, the living water. That's right. He's he He's conversing with her about what she wants to converse with the physical water but he doesn't stop there he leads her to the next level indeed the water i give him or in this case her will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life like it's a huge fountain okay and the woman is really interested at this point Okay, it's not false advertising because what he, the Lord, has to give her is better than physical water. Give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to come here to draw water. Now she's interested. Now she wants to know. Now she is asking for the living water. And uh, this is a reversal. So he broke through. What other barrier comes in verse 16? He tells her to go get her husband again. Yeah. 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 Now, why would Jesus do that? Because that would be kind of like the cultural thing to do. The politically correct thing to do, I guess. Might be. And to show her, you know, he was leading up to point out that he knew all about her, you know, that she didn't have a husband. Yeah, he is definitely leading in that way. What's the barrier to her receiving the living water? Confessing sin. Sin. Yeah, he brings up the sin thing. I say she has to confess her sin and recognize that her lifestyle is wrong and needs some change she also has the opportunity just to blow him off yeah and say that was nice good to know you here's your drink bye but he gives her the opportunity to go back and be a missionary and bring others to him so it's it's not just um one or the other but it's it's this it's this package deal where you have the chance to not only confess the sin, but to bring others along with you. This is important. This is very important. And this hits on exactly what you were saying about the social convention. Jesus is not about to give, you know, I mean, sometimes he meets with one person who needs to have salvation. But here he's seeing the harvest. He's seeing the fields white. And the disciples don't see it, but he sees it. This whole town, basically, is going to become believers through this one woman. And so he sees a great opportunity here. And she has to deal with her sin in order to be the right missionary for this context. Okay, very good. There's a sin barrier that we have personally but it is also a barrier toward reaching those in our community who know our lifestyle, who know in our families what we've been through or before we're a proper witness. 
before we're the right one. And and she is she's got to deal with it, and he's going to make her deal with it. You're doing beautifully through all this. Okay. Go call your husband and come back. Gave her an off ramp. <laughs> Does she tell the truth? Yeah. 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 But he responds with in-depth knowledge of her that she had not shared. So it's it's not, it's not, I've heard people say Jesus didn't know. Jesus did know, but he's giving her this opportunity that then he says, You're right, and so it, it's it's not a mystery to him. That's right. Yeah. You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you've had five husbands. The man you now have is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. Another barrier is put in place. Did you want to say anything about that? I thought maybe I saw your hand. Oh. I'm pretty good at looking for hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What's the barrier she puts up? Verse 19, sir, <laughs> oh, I mean, typically if someone calls you out on something, your first response is to sort of like, whoa, Ooh, yeah, <laughs> Defense, <laughs> I can see that you are a prophet. <laughs> and then she's not offended by it. And um, when I'm called out, that's not always the case. Yeah, verse 20. Now, we don't know the whole background. We can't read the text and say, this is an honest question or this is a deflection, verse 20. But it is a change of subject here. It is relevant, very relevant, but it is a deflection or a divergence from the husband question. Okay, do you have a spiritual authority over me, in essence? Because you Jews have one idea. You're worshiping in Jerusalem. We have another idea. We're worshiping right here. There's a great difference about all this. But, but it parallels with her question, are you greater than Jacob? I mean, she's still trying to figure out who, she, who he is. And so I don't feel like... It's, it's, I don't feel like it's like out of the blue. I feel like she's still like on the same path in her own mind and she's not, she's not following completely. Sure. Like, like dots. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I couldn't connect the dots. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, I like to see that too. Okay. There are others that say, well, she's trying to deflect and, and get a kind of weasel her way out of it. But I think, you know, she could have just left. So I think that's, I, I, I'm all right with that. She wants to know. I think she's an honest, this honest kind of question here. What are we going to do about this? And how does Jesus answer? How is it relevant to her question about all this? How does this all work? You're Jew, I'm Samaritan. We have different worship practices, different places. What does Jesus say? That there would be a time when neither would worship on the mountain or in Jerusalem to worship the Father. So he's trying to find, I guess, common ground, you know. Maybe. Okay, he's leading her beyond the place of worship to the person, mm -hmm. beyond the place. And this is something, there's a barrier today in our own culture. The place of worship sometimes becomes more important than the person that we're worshiping together um, so there's great divide among churches and people and christians even in that sense well this is my territory to worship but jesus talks about worshiping in spirit and in truth God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Okay, so he's, he takes us beyond the place of worship. Oh, I, I, I worship on Sunday morning in church. <laughs> we should live a life of worship. Every day can be worship, whether at work or any place.
because you're worshiping the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, a person. Okay, uh, Je uh, Jesus uh, gets this woman uh, a little further down the road, and she's got an idea. I know that Messiah is coming. When he comes, he'll explain everything to us. What barrier is that? She called him a prophet. So again, it's the understanding. She, Jesus has led her to ask the right questions, but it's still a barrier. She yeah. doesn't really know who he is. But she has professed strength in the knowledge of Messiah. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus has already done that, <laughs> right to her, personally, given her a theological lesson that is still extremely relevant to us today. How does Jesus reveal himself in verse 26? That he was the Messiah. Yes. And the wording, how is that word? I am he. I am he, yeah. The proper <laughs> name of God, yeah. I am who I am. I'm he. I'm here. I am the one who was and is and is to come. Ah, she gets it. Okay. Uh, we have to kind of conclude here. So let's try to pick up a few questions. We may not get to talk about the disciples, and that's all right. Uh, but they will understand later, by and by. <laughs> But uh, uh, what is the living water that Jesus is talking about? Let's try to be real clear about that before we go on. Okay. Salvation, yes. And what aspect of salvation? Eternal life. Eternal life, yes. How is it found? How is it given? Forgiveness. Of sins. Jesus. Forgiveness of sins, confession of sin, faith in Jesus, the Messiah. Yes. And the whole idea of it bubbling up and flowing over it is also connected with the Spirit, Holy Spirit in us. John 7, 37 and 38. Jesus will reveal that later in a different context. Talk about the Holy Spirit. But it's eternal life. Yeah. It's blowing. It's, it's overflowing. And there's, it, yes. Okay, good. Uh, water, you know, we need water every day. Okay, baptism, yeah. How about taking in Christ every day? Taking in the Spirit every day, being filled. The food, that's the disciples' idea. I got food you don't even know about, Jesus says. My food is to do the will of God. There's a nourishment, there's a Jesus, the bread, the living water. And and he's teaching all of this to his disciples. What, what is he teaching specifically about the Samaritan woman encounter to the disciples that they actually learn later on? That he is the Messiah for more than just the Jews. That's right. Yeah. And some of them, first people to believe outside of the group of disciples and they're in Jerusalem, it are the Samaritans. And the disciples go back to these areas that some cases Jesus has been accepted, some cases rejected. And Jesus tells them, go, you're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. They go back and some of the first churches take place here in Samaria. Really remarkable. And there's this whole village that brings him in. And we see again, Jesus is not infected by living for over a day there in Samaria. <laughs> he doesn't become unclean by these people. Instead, he makes them clean. Again, the washing idea, the purity, the water, and all that. See how all this is just dynamite stuff here? It's overflowing. It's rich. You can come back to this again and again. But I hope you'll apply it to yourself, too, and think about this okay, as just every day can be an encounter with a stranger, 
not as a danger, but as you have something that they need or they might need. And it doesn't have to be forced or unnatural like this. You just say, may I have a drink? Let me tell you about how what I find is really satisfying, even more than this glass of water, is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, my Savior. So even when I'm thirsty, he has satisfied my inner longing. But that, 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 I mean, you kind of stretch it out and you lead people where they go. And sometimes they're going to say, no, I want to go back now to my own town. I don't want to talk about this. That doesn't mean we we give up. We just let's go on. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful episode. We thank you for women out there that are willing to encounter us, to encounter Jesus. And we want people to be led along to something more satisfying than physical needs of this life. Lord, thank you for being a missionary God. Thank you for coming to us in Christ Jesus, making your gift of salvation known to us, making all these connections for us so that we can grasp your salvation, what it's like. We ask for your help in our conversations and your spirit to help guide us to the right people at the right time and uh, people that will take hold of these things and grasp you and lead others to you and be missionaries. We thank you for each one here. Bless us with the spiritual nourishment and the, the leading of your Holy Spirit to, uh, to live in the joy of your salvation now and for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for going on our little uh, journey there to the well. And maybe one day some of us will get to go see that well there in, in, in Israel. <laughs> if not, we have a well. You can come see it anytime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do that. You rode your bicycle right past it. All right. <laughs> I'll do that. God bless each one of you, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.